Hello, everybody. I'm Cheryl Talley Moss. Welcome to my organic food forest. In this episode, I'm going to share with you everything that I plan to grow in the greenhouse during the fall and all winter long. Here's a small clip of the video I uploaded on September the 12th of the raised bed in my greenhouse, the largest raised bed. And I want to share with you how bare it was during that time and compare and contrast it to how it looks today. I'm, I'm amazed at the tremendous growth of the tomatoes that I grew from seeds. And I'm also amazed at all of the little... Uh, marigold seedlings that I transplanted that had reseeded themselves and there's tremendous growth also in the basil seedlings as well as what else oh yes zinnias and the society garlic I divided okay so today is October 4th Friday and I want to show you a a little video of my greenhouse and that's how it looks without the cover and it is a 20 feet by 10 feet wide and 7 feet tall and I'll be putting that cover on shortly right now I'm zooming in on my lemons and lime trees I have two improved Meyer lemon trees and two Mexican key lime trees um that are tropical of course so i'm gonna have to house them in the greenhouse now all winter long i let the canopy of my 20 plus feet banana plants shade them and as you can see i'm beginning to remove a lot of the canopy of the banana plants as well as uh, i cut the sugar cane down so going back into the greenhouse, I want you now to take a look at the other uh, tropical trees that I'm growing. I have two soursop trees that I started from seeds. And as you can see from the tag I put on there that I started them in November of 2017. And they have grown a lot. And they can bear between three and five years. So I'm hoping next year to get some fruit, but I won't be disappointed if I have to wait another year. And also, I am uh, I dug up a volunteer. I know that's a hibiscus leaf. I don't know which hibiscus it is because I did start some white Texas star hibiscus and red hibiscus. Right there are a few celery seeds that I sold into that five-gallon bucket. And you're looking at some volunteer Mexican petunias that I pick up as the wind scatter them and they grow in the wood chips and I just uh, grow them through the winter. Now look at this bed and I just showed you less than a minute ago how small those tomato plants were and the zinnias, marigolds, they're all doing well. I have volunteer basil to come up that I separated and if you look real close, I'm just try trying to show you something here. Um, oh, carrots, carrots, Parisian carrots. I scattered seeds along that area too. But I'm trying some new varieties of tomatoes. And I think right here I'm going to show you that I have one that's beginning to flower right there. So I'm expecting a little tomato to pop up right there in a few days. The Parisian carrots, I got the seeds from Baker Creek, and they are a round um, uh, carrot. So I know that carrots is an excellent companion plant for tomatoes, as well as basil and marigolds and by society garlic. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch these grow and flower and fruit all through the fall and hopefully into the winter which is going to make it mandatory that I heat the greenhouse, but I'm already ready for that. So now let's look at the second um, small, or I should say narrow garden bed. I only bought three six packs of transplants and I decided to uh, buy broccoli right here 
and I divided my society garlic and I put some of it over in this bed as well. I also purchased one six pack of Savoy cabbage. And I don't know why I bought some collard greens because I have plenty of collard green seedlings, but I did purchase a six pack of collard greens, Georgia collards. And I pricked out a lot of the marigolds and put them in the center of those cement bricks. Right there, you are looking at my Kalamondon citrus tree. It grew a foot under the gazebo this summer. And next to it are two, what do you call those? trees mimosas yeah they can be very invasive but i'm going to grow them in pots and keep them pruned kind of bonsai and those are some mustard spinach greens and another look at the pepper tree i'm going to attempt to overwinter it has about 20 peppers on it beautiful beautiful greens now those are the two uh, containers that I showed you guys a few days ago that I'm going to just try to establish good roots. I'm going to keep topping these peppers off. There are two in each five-gallon bucket with a uh, uh, straw for mulch. And look what I found this morning. You remember the uh, sugar cane, the last video I made? I put six little pieces of that sugar cane and one is um, is um, breaking soil and rooting already. And here I have four boxes that I'm gonna have my son help me move into the greenhouse in the front of the greenhouse. And one right there, I have uh, red uh, giant mustard greens. Next to it is uh, mustard spinach. And I succession planted it and that's another box that contains mustard greens and collard greens on the end and these little grow boxes have wheels on them but i have to lift them up around the uh gazebo and at the last minute i decided to try some ginger i'm gonna grow that and another uh, thing at the last minute i decided to do was to grow some corn so all of these things that i'm showing you right in here all of these plants and flowers um i'm going to try to get them into the greenhouse some kind of way even if i have to put them in hanging baskets i'll just go in the shed and find some containers because i'm not ready to let them go because they're pretty but we know that the frost would kill them so i'm going to do my best to try to grow them during the winter and even the echinacea this concludes my short video on my next video, I'm going to show you all of the food that I'm growing in raised garden beds in my food forest that I plan to leave uncovered, unprotected, except for the insect netting, all fall and winter long. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye now.